So in this presentation, I'll be presenting a research project that have been in the making from last couple of years, and I've been working on this project in my previous roles. And it's and it's it's a roadmap has evolved basically over the time. And in this presentation, particularly, I'll give you an overview and uh, that we will explore the current landscape in digital education to start with. And then we will discuss the necessity for an interactive roadmap. And also I'll mention some theoretical underpinnings and then <laughs> I'll take you through the 2D map in four phases. And lastly, there'll be an opportunity for some Q&A. To give a background about myself, I'm currently working as the team lead for teaching innovation and learning enhancement hub at Staffordshire University. And I have been a digital technologist for over 12 years. And as you can see, I put logos of different institutions I've worked at. I've not stayed at very long for at many places. So I've worked at seven different institutions and that doesn't count my part-time role as a consultant at several different organizations as well. And so this roadmap journey started when I was start working at University of Hertfordshire, where I did a soft launch of the roadmap and then it incorporated into another organization and then at University of Nottingham. I'm still working on it right now. I'm giving it a shape as a research project and want to make it a shareable format as a framework that can be accessed by any institution. I am a Lego series play facilitator and one of my areas that I'm more passionate about is accessibility, playful learning, virtual reality and course designing in particular. I've even done a course in artificial intelligence data science from Alan Turing Institute and just to uh, serve my need for knowing more about AI in education. And so I'll make the start and so we'll start by looking at where we currently stand. As you all are aware, the digital landscape is changing rapidly and that brings both challenges and opportunities. And one of the biggest hurdles that I have come across and we generally face is upscaling of staff. It's not just about familiarity with technological tools. It's also about integrating these tools effectively into education practice. And while it's essential to advance, the pace at which the technological changes are just moving up, it leaves our staff struggling to catch up. And this sense of always playing a catch up, not just create a technological barrier, but also a psychological barrier and kind of hurdle for our staff just to catch up with different technologies. And this fear of lagging behind can offer be a significant roadblock. And moreover, one of the most glaring issues that we face is a lack of structured approach to digital education and training. And not having an absence, uh, not having a clear kind of pathway for staff development means that there are a lot of individuals who are talented, but they're not often very clear on how to channel their skills effectively for the digital age that we are living in now. And precisely these issues that led me to the development of a roadmap in the first place. So with those challenges laid out, let's talk about solutions. Why do we need a roadmap? Just imagine you're setting out on a long journey without a GPS or a map. Sure, you will eventually reach your destination, but at what cost? So that would mean time, resources, and missed opportunities. So this roadmap basically serves as this essential navigational tool, bridging the training and development gaps that has held us back. And I must mention that this isn't a one size fits all approach. One of the beauties of this roadmap is its integral flexibility and adaptability. Like every department and every individual has unique needs. And this roadmap is also designed to adapt to the needs of unique needs of a department or any colleague. And also I must mention that it's not just about teaching new skills to people, but also creating an environment where staff can master these skills. And we're talking about a level of proficiency that can only be achieved through a well thought out systematic approach that an institution has to take. So we have now talked about what and why. So in this slide, I will mention uh, like how have I designed this roadmap and what principles guide it. So the roadmap I'll be presenting you in the next slide is not just a tool for staff development, but is firmly grounded in adult learning theory, which recognizes that staff members are independent learners with unique uh, technology experiences or particularly preferences. And by respecting their diversity, this roadmap can create an inclusive environment that promotes active engagement. 
And uh, constructivism is another pillar that this roadmap leans on. This isn't just about consuming information, and it's also about building upon what colleagues already know. Imagine that you're working at, at an education institution that recognizes your current skills and takes you on a journey to add layer upon layer to your existing knowledge. And lastly, in terms of design, I have prioritized a user-centric approach. The interface, the training modules, the resources, everything is design keeping the end user in mind, whether you are a tech savvy academic staff member or a professional or just starting out. Roadmap is meant to cater to everyone's uh, needs, basically. So this is the 2D interface of the roadmap that I've launched in the past. Uh, it's changed shape, it's looked different, but I've just thought I'll show you. Uh, so through uh, intensive research, this interactive roadmap for service design brings to life plan introduction of value-added services, products, events, advices, guidance that can be offered to our colleagues at any organization or institution. So the, this roadmap uh, that I've shared on the screen have a scaffolded training and support provision with multiplicity of resources. Because like students, our staff are also diverse and everyone are at a different level of comfort spectrum when it comes to using technology. And as you can see, uh, I have prepared this roadmap into four phases. One is preparation, development, delivery, and follow-up. This simply conveys that assistance is available with every aspect of hybrid working and teaching experience, right from booking a virtual induction in the preparation phase to booking a session on exploring digital pedagogy or seeking assistance with module learning design in the planning phase. The staff will be able to book for central training and access any training resource within this interactive roadmap. So I'll elaborate a slightly more on the preparation stage. The preparation stage uh, is the first stage is that is a part of this interactive roadmap and serves as the foundation for successful staff development. And this stage particularly involves identifying learning needs of individual staff members, as well as overall goals of an organization. And it also involves uh, selecting appropriate training methods and material to meet uh, those needs and the goals that you have identified. And uh, in the planning phase, uh, the sets out a stage for success and helps to ensure that staff members are equipped with the knowledge and skills that need to excel in the role. And this involves creation and implementation of training programs that are tailored and very unique to meet the needs of each individual staff member. And the staff member can participate in a variety of ways and activities such as online courses, workshops, simulations, and these activities are designed to be interactive and engagement, uh, promoting active learning and knowledge retention. And the goal of this particular phase is to provide staff members with skills and knowledge they need to perform their job effectively, uh, effectively and efficiently. And now comes down to the third phase, which is the delivery phase. And at this phase is where the staff development plan is put into action and the training and support are delivered to the colleagues. It's important to ensure that a delivery is engaging, interactive, and tailored to the unique needs of each learner. At this stage, it's very crucial to monitor progress and adjust the training and support as needed. One of the key components of delivery stage is the multimodal training module. And the last stage, which is more critical and crucial, is the follow-up stage. And at this stage, we ensure that the staff development process is not just a one-time event, but an ongoing journey towards growth and improvement. And by following up with the participants and all the colleagues who have participated in the training, we can access their progress, identify areas of strength and weaknesses, and provide additional support as it may be required. And uh, I've been even planning and even did uh, incorporate gamif uh, kind of gamification into the model before I rolled out at my first institution where I launched this uh, model, just to boost engagement and commitment. And also, I think it can tie up with different initiatives that you might have, be it around accessibility or digital transformation. So I'm creating a framework for an initiative at my current institution, which is around digital transformation framework, which will be in three different stages, foundational skills, transformation skills, and elevation skills. Foundational skills are the skills that everybody must have. So this will be a part of induction that everybody who has joined an institution would have been at an institution for longer. They need to participate in the refresher course. And transformation skills are the skills that colleagues have basically should know that it might help them with their teaching experience and uh, uh, in their professional journey. And the last stage would be elevation stage. 
and these would cover the skills that colleagues can know. So all the skills uh, would be uh, all the training programs will be divided into different phases of this three tier model, depending on self evaluation of where you see yourself. You can participate in di different activities and to add another element of gamification, we'll also provide digital badges as a form of acknowledgement that people can just proudly say what uh, part of what training they have participated in and it will just acknowledge their skill set to other colleagues and to institution as well. And now in this slide, I will basically highlight the benefits of having an interactive roadmap. So the interactive roadmap offers numerous benefits for staff development. Firstly, it provides a scaffolded and multi-modal training and support system that creates an immersive environment for active learning. The approach values diversity and respects staff as an independent learner with unique technology and experience and preferences that they might have. In addition to these benefits, the roadmap also offers a clear and structured approach to staff development, which over all four stages being very distinct, and each stage is designed to provide staff with necessary tools and resources to enhance their skills and knowledge, and while also allowing them to track their own progress and receive uh, feedback. And overall, this roadmap assists in conveying clear vision for digital learning practices that basically helps in building trust and confidence upon colleague for university's vision or on digital education team, as this will assure the staff regarding the quality and the scaffolded uh, nature of resources and support available at any institution. Because more commonly what happens is the majority of the staff are not even aware of the initiatives or practices that might be on the offer by the digital like services team as long as they're clear in with the vision and the offer that is available for them, it not just uh, kind of ensures, but also reassure them for the quality of support. And that basically incul inculcates some confidence in their individual practice. And the future of interactive roadmap is bright and promising. As technology continues to advance, we plan to incorporate new features and tool into the platform to enhance the learning experience for staff. And our goal is to create a dynamic and interactive environment that adapts to the unique needs and preferences of each learners. And uh, particularly also plan to expand our offering beyond staff development to include other areas such as student learning, community engagement by leveraging the power of interactive roadmap. I think this can definitely make a meaningful impact on uh, the teaching experience or the professional experience of colleagues at any institution or organization. And I have already covered why, what, and how this interactive roadmap was created, but there's one more vital aspect to touch upon, the impact it can have beyond our immediate environments. When I talk about broad impact and application, what do I mean? So think of a roadmap as a master template, capable of influencing not just individual learning journeys, but also shaping institutional strategies and policies. It's basically a principle that can be applied in various settings, not from a single department to an entire educational uh, institution. It could be even for a different context. It could be for accessibility. It could be for student support. And another uh, important aspect of this uh, road, roadmap that I'll, I presented to you is accessibility. It's not just grounded in complex theory, designed to be very understandable and usable. And last, lastly, for those thinking about a bigger picture, and I must mention this model can grow with us and it can evolve with time. It's designed to be scalable, meaning it can expand with our needs and it's replicable as well, indicating that uh, success isn't limited to just one environment. And I'll be creating this model, which can be adopted uh, by other institutions as a framework and they can adapt to their own unique needs and amplifying the potential of the impact of this particular research. And I think lastly, in conclusion, I would say that this roadmap is a strategy for staff development that offers innovative, high impact services, product events, and basically a guidance resource. And as we move forward, it is important to recognize the potential of a roadmap, something like this that provides a clear vision to revolutionize staff development and enhance the quality of teaching and learning. And we can empower our colleagues to reach their full potential and create a culture of continuous environment as long as we give them a clear vision and a kind of showcase of what is there to support their learning and development. So these are some references. And lastly, I would take this opportunity to thank you.